After 20 years of marriage, I caught my wife cheating, but the worst part? Our daughter supported the affair. Now, my ex is in a mental health facility, my daughter is begging for reconciliation, and I'm trying to find a way forward. I don't really know how to start this because, honestly, it's kind of embarrassing to admit how much of a fool I was, but I feel like I just gotta get it all out. I'm 48 now, but this whole mess started when I was 20. I thought I had life all figured out back then, spoiler alert, I didn't. I met Maria when she was 19 and I was 20. I'm not gonna lie, I fell hard. She was one of those girls who just had everything going for her, beautiful, smart, funny, the whole package, and she liked me. Like, seriously, she was into me in a way that made me feel like I won the lottery. We clicked right away, everything just felt right. We'd go on dates, laugh at the dumb jokes, talk about the future like we had it all planned out. You know how it is when you're young and think life is gonna be easy? After two years of dating, she got pregnant. I was 22, scared as hell, but also kind of excited. I mean, I wasn't planning to have a kid that young, but I loved Maria and I thought it would all work out. When our daughter, Lily, was born, it felt like everything fell into place. She was this tiny, beautiful baby, and I felt this bond with Maria that I thought would last forever. Yeah, that didn't exactly happen. We moved in with my mom after Lily was born because, honestly, I couldn't afford rent at the time. I was working at my mom's accounting firm as a receptionist, and I thought it would be temporary. My dad had passed when I was 15, so it was just me and mom for the longest time. She was a strong woman, ran her own business, and took care of me after my dad died. So, when she offered us a place to stay, I jumped on it. Maria, on the other hand, wasn't thrilled about living with my mom, but I figured it was just a temporary thing, and we'd get our own place soon enough. A couple of years went by, and we actually did pretty well for ourselves. I got into programming, and this was when it was really starting to blow up. So, I started making pretty good money. Six figures by the time I was 25. I felt like I was killing it. Good job, good wife, beautiful daughter. So, naturally, I thought the next step was getting married. We tied the knot when I was 25 and Maria was 24. Everything was going great, or so I thought. But then, shit started to go sideways. When I was 29, Maria's dad had a really bad accident. Like, life-changing bad. He got paralyzed from the waist down in a car crash, and suddenly, he couldn't work anymore. Her mom wasn't working either, so they were both pretty much screwed. Now, I'm not heartless. Obviously, we had to help them out. But it got complicated real fast. Maria suggested that her parents move in with us. They were living in a rented place, and since her dad couldn't work, they couldn't afford it anymore. I talked it over with my mom, and we agreed they could stay with us for a while. At first, it seemed like the right thing to do. I mean, family is family, right? But having them move and made things tense. Maria's sister, Hannah, was around all the time too, and suddenly, our little home was crowded as hell. To make things worse, Maria started working part-time to help out financially. I didn't mind that, but it was like everything became about her family. I was handling all the bills, groceries, Lily's school fees, and now I had Maria's parents under my roof. And it felt like I was carrying all this weight on my back. I don't want to sound like a jerk, but it felt like I was living in their house, not the other way around. Then Maria dropped this bomb on me. One day, out of nowhere, she tells me she wants to use the money I inherited from my grandmother to buy a house for her mom, in her mom's name. Like, what? I get helping out, but that was my inheritance, and she wanted to put it in her mom's name, not even ours. That didn't sit right with me at all. I mean, who does that? I tried to talk to her about how weird it felt to use my inheritance to buy her mama house, and she got all defensive. We started having arguments, about money, about her family, about everything. We were growing distant, and I could feel it, but I didn't know how to fix it. I thought maybe things would settle down, but they didn't. It just kept getting worse. Then my mom had a stroke. That was a tough time for me. She survived, but she needed surgery, and it was pretty serious. I was freaked out. Maria, on the other hand, acted like it was more of an inconvenience than anything else. She straight up told me that she didn't want my mom coming home to recover, because it would be too much, having both her dad and my mom needing care. I was like, what the hell? That's my mom. I told her I'd hire a nurse to help, but she wanted me to hire two. One for her dad, and one for my mom. I couldn't afford that, especially since I was already covering everything else. Maria and Hannah made decent money, and I told her they should help cover her dad's expenses. That's when things really started to fall apart. Our daughter Lily was about eight at this time, and she was starting to act out. She was getting really rude to me, and I had no idea why. I tried talking to her, but she just shut me down. It hurt, because I was doing everything I could to keep the family together, but it felt like Maria and Lily were both pulling away from me. A couple of years went by like that, with things just slowly getting worse. Then my mom had another stroke, and this time, she didn't make it. Losing her absolutely crushed me. She had raised me all on her own, and now she was gone. And guess what? Maria didn't seem to care. She was cold, distant, and our daughter didn't even come to the funeral. That's when I knew things were seriously messed up. Two months after my mom passed, Maria's mom straight up asked me if I was going to move out of my own house, because I was too depressed. I couldn't believe it. I told her off, reminding her how long they'd grieved over Maria's dad. We never asked them to leave, but now they were telling me to go? In my own home? I brought it up to Maria, and she didn't even have anything to say about it. 
She just brushed me off, like my feelings didn't matter anymore. I guess that's when I started to realize something was really wrong. Maria wasn't the woman I fell in love with anymore, and I had no idea what had changed. It felt like my whole world was slowly crumbling, and I was just standing there, helpless to stop it. So after my mom passed and I told off Maria's mom for suggesting I move out of my own damn house, I figured maybe things would cool off for a bit. Maybe Maria and I could work on things and get back to where we used to be. But nah, things didn't get better. They got worse, and fast. I was doing my best to keep it together. I had my job, the house, Lily, and trying to figure out what the hell was happening in my marriage. Maria and I barely spoke unless it was about bills or something basic. And Lily? Man, Lily was just completely different. She wasn't my little girl anymore. She used to look at me with love and excitement, but now it was like I didn't even exist. She'd barely acknowledge me, and when she did, it was with this attitude that made me feel like I was just a stranger living in her house. It was eating me up inside. One day, I was just trying to clean up the kitchen after a long day at work, and I noticed Lily's phone sitting on the counter. I don't usually go through her stuff, but I was curious because she'd been acting so weird lately. Maybe she was going through something at school or with friends, and I wanted to figure it out. I know, I know, snooping isn't the best move, but I was desperate. I grabbed the phone and unlocked it, and that's when I saw it. A message popped up right as I picked up the phone. It said, it's good the old witch is gone now. You can have the house to yourself. We can party on your birthday. I froze. I mean, I knew Maria and Lily had been cold towards my mom when she was sick, but this? This was Lily talking about my mom, her grandmother. I was shaking. My heart was pounding, and I didn't know what to do. Part of me wanted to believe that maybe I was misunderstanding it. Maybe it was some stupid joke between teenagers. But then I kept reading. There were more messages. Messages where Lily and this random guy Josh were trashing me and my mom. They were saying things like, he's such a control freak. Good thing he's always working. And, your mom deserves so much better than him. I scrolled further, and it all hit me. This guy, Josh, wasn't just some random friend of Lily's. He was Maria's boyfriend. Maria had been cheating on me with this guy for God knows how long, and Lily knew about it. Not only did she know, but she was okay with it. She was supporting it. I don't know if you've ever felt your whole world collapse in an instant, but that's exactly what happened. My hands were shaking so bad I almost dropped the phone. I just sat there, staring at the screen, trying to process what I was reading. My wife, the woman I'd been with for over a decade, the mother of my child, was having an affair. And not only that, but our daughter knew and was cheering it on. It was like I got punched in the gut. I couldn't breathe for a second. I put the phone down and just sat there in silence. I didn't know whether to scream, cry, or just throw everything out the window. It felt like I was in some twisted nightmare, and I couldn't wake up. I needed to confront Maria. I knew that much. But I didn't want to do it in front of Lily. I needed to be calm, even though I was losing it inside. So I waited until later that night when Lily was in her room, and I called Maria into the kitchen. I didn't even know where to start, so I just held up the phone and showed her the messages. Her face turned pale. She didn't say a word at first, just stood there staring at the screen. And then, like clockwork, she started yelling at me for snooping through Lily's phone. You had no right to go through her private messages, she screamed at me. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Here she was, caught red-handed, and her first reaction was to turn it on me. I yelled back, are you seriously more concerned about me looking at Lily's phone than the fact that you're cheating on me, that you've been lying to me for years? And that's when she broke down. She didn't deny it. She didn't even try to explain it away. She just stood there crying and kept repeating, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like that was supposed to make everything better. But sorry wasn't going to fix this. I wanted to scream, to throw her out right then and there. But instead, I just told her to leave the kitchen. I needed space, and I couldn't even look at her. She stormed off, probably to go cry in Lily's room or something. I didn't care at that point. I sat there for what felt like hours, just trying to figure out how everything had gone so wrong. How had I missed all the signs? How long had this been going on? And the worst part, the part that really cut me deep, was knowing that my own daughter had been a part of it. The little girl I raised, the one I used to take to the park and play catch with, had betrayed me in a way I couldn't even comprehend. The next morning, Maria didn't say a word to me, neither did Lily. It was like we were all just pretending nothing had happened, even though everything had changed. I couldn't take it anymore, so I sat Maria down that afternoon and told her I wanted her out. I gave her nine days to pack up and leave, to take her stuff and go stay with her family or, hell, even with Josh for all I cared. She didn't fight it. She just cried and nodded. But I wasn't moved by her tears anymore. I didn't care if she was sorry. It was too late for that. As for Lily, I couldn't even look at her. Every time I saw her, I felt this deep, gnawing pain in my chest. I wanted to talk to her, to ask her why she did it, why she didn't tell me, why she thought it was okay. But I didn't have the strength to face it yet. That night, I barely slept. I just lay there, staring at the ceiling, thinking about everything. The lies, the betrayal, the fact that I didn't even know who my wife or my daughter were anymore. My life, the life I thought I had built for us, was gone, and I had no idea how to move forward from here. So after the whole thing with finding those messages on Lily's phone and realizing my wife Maria had been cheating, I was in a total daze for days. It was like everything I thought I knew about my life just came crashing down. I couldn't even function properly at work, but I forced myself to go just to avoid being in the same house as Maria and Lily. 
About a week after I told Maria to pack her stuff and get out, I came home from work and noticed that things seemed a little too quiet. I walked around the house and all of Maria's things were gone. Clothes, personal stuff, everything. It's like she just wiped herself out of my life in one swoop. It should have felt like a relief, but honestly it was just weird. I knew it was coming, but seeing it for real was different. I sat down on the couch, just kind of zoning out, when my phone buzzed. It was a text from Maria. She said she'd moved in with her sister for now and that she'd be back later in the week to talk about the next steps. Like I didn't already know what that meant. Divorce. I guess I should have expected it, but seeing the word divorce in black and white hit different. It's like I'd been living in this fog, and now the reality of everything was punching me in the gut. I was about to lose everything. The house, my daughter, the woman I spent over a decade with. Everything was unraveling fast and I was just standing there, helpless to stop it. But what got me wasn't the divorce itself. It was the fact that Lily was still staying with me. Maria had left, but Lily didn't go with her. At first I thought maybe this was a chance for us to talk, to figure things out. But man, I was so wrong. Lily barely even looked at me. It was like she blamed me for everything. And I get it. She was 15. Confused. Caught between her parents. But that didn't make it hurt any less. One night, about three days after Maria left, I decided I needed to confront Lily. I needed to know why she acted like I was the enemy. So, I knocked on her door, and after what felt like eternity, she finally opened it. She looked at me like I was a stranger. What, she said, cold as ice. I didn't even know where to start. I asked her why she'd been so distant. Why she was taking her mom's side when Maria had done the cheating. I mean, Maria was the one who tore our family apart, not me. You don't get it, she said, crossing her arms like she was the one who'd been wronged. You're never around, dad. Mom was the one who was always here for me. You were too busy with work. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I'd been working my ass off to provide for both of them. And this is what she thought? That I didn't care because I wasn't around 24 to 7? I tried to explain that I had to work to keep us going, to pay the bills, to give her the life she had. But she wasn't having any of it. She just kept repeating how her mom needed someone, and that Josh, the guy Maria was cheating with, was there for her in ways I wasn't. It was like a knife to the heart. My own daughter was defending the guy who destroyed my marriage, like I was the one who messed everything up. I tried to stay calm, but inside I was boiling. How could she be so blind? You're seriously defending him? I asked, trying to keep my voice from shaking. He's the reason your mom and I are splitting up. He's the reason our family is falling apart. She just shrugged. Maybe if you were around more, mom wouldn't have needed him. That was it. I couldn't hold back anymore. Needed him? She didn't need him, Lily. She chose him. She chose to betray me, betray us. And you're okay with that? Lily looked away, and I could see tears welling up in her eyes, but she wouldn't let herself cry. It's not that simple, dad. I didn't know what else to say. I just stood there, staring at her, realizing that whatever bond we had was broken. She wasn't my little girl anymore, and I didn't know how to fix that. I'm sorry, I said, even though I wasn't sure what I was apologizing for. I guess I just didn't know what else to say. But she didn't respond. She just closed the door in my face, and that was that. That night, I laid in bed, thinking about how everything had gotten so messed up. How did it come to this? When did Maria and I drift so far apart that she felt the need to cheat? When did my daughter stop seeing me as her father and start seeing me as the bad guy? It's like I'd lost everything, and I didn't even know when it happened. The next morning, I woke up to a note on the kitchen counter. Lily had left early to go stay with Maria at her sister's place. The note was short, just a quick, I'm staying with mom for a while. No explanation, no apology, nothing. She was gone, just like Maria. I spent the next few days in a sort of limbo, not really knowing what to do with myself. I went to work, came home to an empty house, and repeated the process. It was like I was stuck on autopilot. But then, a couple weeks later, I got a call from a lawyer. Maria had already filed for divorce, and she wanted to move forward with splitting everything up. I couldn't believe how fast it was happening. It felt like just yesterday we were a family, and now, I was getting legal papers telling me it was all over. I called up my buddy Greg, who's a lawyer, and he agreed to help me out with the divorce. He told me to gather all the proof I had, texts, messages, anything that could help me in court. So I did just that. I dug through every message I'd saved, every bit of evidence of Maria's affair, and handed it all over to Greg. The divorce process was brutal. Maria didn't even try to deny the affair, but she still wanted half of everything, half the house, half the savings, and of course, spousal support. I was pissed, but Greg told me to stay calm and let him handle it. I trusted him, but it was still hard to sit there while Maria's lawyer made me out to be the bad guy, claiming I'd been emotionally distant and neglectful. Like really? I was the one working my ass off to support the family while she was out screwing around with Josh. Eventually, we settled. Maria got half the house, some spousal support for a few years, and Lily decided to stay with her. I didn't even fight for custody. By that point, it felt like my daughter had already chosen sides, and I didn't have the energy to fight for someone who didn't want me in their life. After the court stuff was over, I came home and just sat there in the empty house, thinking about everything. It was all gone. My family, my marriage, my daughter, everything I thought I had, just gone. All I had left were some pieces of furniture and a few fading memories. But even though it felt like the end, I knew deep down that it wasn't. It was just the beginning of something else. 
I just didn't know what that something was yet. I guess I should have known things would get worse after the divorce, but like, I kept hoping maybe there'd be some kind of light at the end of the tunnel. Spoiler, there wasn't. After everything went down with Maria and Lily, I was left in this weird limbo. Just me rattling around in this house that didn't feel like mine anymore. You'd think after Maria moved out, I'd feel some sense of relief, right? But honestly, the silence was suffocating. I didn't see much of Lily after she left that note saying she was going to stay with her mom. I didn't reach out either, because at that point, I didn't know if I even wanted to. I know that sounds harsh, but it's like, how do you come back from finding out your kid was basically on the side of the guy who helped destroy your family? I kept thinking back to that text she sent, where she called my mom, the old witch. That one message haunted me for days. I just couldn't wrap my head around it. A couple of weeks after the divorce was finalized, I started getting calls from Maria's family. Her sister Hannah, her mom, even some cousin I hadn't talked to in years. All of them calling me, trying to smooth things over, as if this was something that could be patched up with a quick conversation. They kept saying how hard things were for Maria now, how she wasn't handling the breakup well, and how Lily was caught in the middle. Like, no shit she's caught in the middle. That's what happens when you let your daughter be part of your affair. One day, Hannah showed up at my house without warning. I didn't want to let her in, but she was banging on the door, and I figured I'd at least hear her out. She came in all frantic, like it was an emergency, and started laying it on thick about how Maria wasn't doing well mentally. I wasn't heartless. I didn't want Maria to suffer or anything, but it wasn't like I was going to take her back. That ship had sailed, crashed, and sunk. Hannah was talking about how Maria wasn't eating, wasn't sleeping, and how Lily was struggling with it all. She said Maria needed help and that maybe I could do something. I just stood there letting her talk, but all I could think was, this isn't my problem anymore. I'd spent years trying to keep my family together, and Maria was the one who blew it all up. Now they wanted me to step in and fix everything? Not happening. I'm sorry, Hannah, I finally said, cutting her off mid-rant. But I can't help her. She made her choices. Hannah gave me this look, like I'd just told her the world was ending. But she's your wife, she said like she couldn't believe I was being so cold. Ex-wife, I corrected her, and I've got nothing left to give. She sat there for a minute, staring at me like she couldn't believe what she was hearing. Then she started crying, like that was going to change my mind. I felt bad, sure, but I wasn't about to let guilt pull me back into the mess Maria had created. After a while, she got up, still sniffling, and left without saying another word. I didn't feel any better after she left. If anything, I felt worse. I couldn't stop thinking about what Hannah said, about how Maria wasn't doing well, about how Lily was stuck in the middle of it all. As much as I tried to push it all out of my mind, I couldn't help but feel guilty. I kept wondering if maybe I should have done something different. Maybe if I'd handled things better with Lily, she wouldn't have turned against me. A couple of days later, I got a call from my lawyer Greg. He said Maria had been admitted to some kind of mental health facility. Apparently, she'd had a breakdown, and they were worried she might hurt herself. Hearing that hit me harder than I expected. I know she cheated, and I know she lied, but this? I didn't want her to suffer like this. Greg told me there wasn't much I could do about it, but I should probably be aware in case Lily tried to reach out, and she did. I got a text from Lily that same night, the first one since she left. It was long, and I could tell she struggled to write it. She said she was sorry for everything, for how she'd treated me, and that she didn't know how to handle everything that was happening with her mom. She said Maria had been spiraling for weeks, and she didn't know what to do anymore. I didn't reply right away. I didn't know how to reply. Part of me wanted to forgive her, to tell her we'd figure it out, that we could move on from all of this. But the other part of me, the part that remembered all the lies, the betrayal, the way she'd sided with Josh, couldn't just forget what happened. The next day, I finally texted back. I kept it short. I told her I was sorry she was going through this, and that I hoped her mom got the help she needed. But I didn't say anything about us, about fixing our relationship. I couldn't. Not yet, at least. Things stayed quiet for a while after that. I didn't hear from Lily again, and Maria's family stopped calling. It was like the storm had passed, and I was left standing in the wreckage, trying to figure out what the hell I was supposed to do next. But then, out of nowhere, Josh showed up at my door. Yeah, that Josh. The guy Maria had cheated on me with. At first, I didn't even recognize him. He looked like crap. He was all scruffy and unshaven. His clothes wrinkled like he'd been sleeping in them for days. I wanted to slam the door in his face, but something about the way he looked stopped me. He didn't look like the cocky jerk I imagined. He looked defeated. What do you want? I asked, keeping my voice steady, even though I was ready to explode. He didn't say anything for a minute, just stood there, staring at the ground. Then, finally, he spoke. I didn't mean for it to get this far, he mumbled, barely loud enough for me to hear. I didn't mean to ruin everything. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. You didn't mean to? I snapped. You had an affair with my wife, man. You knew exactly what you were doing. He nodded, still looking down. I know, I know. I'm sorry, okay? I just. I don't know how to fix it. I almost laughed. Fix it? You can't fix this. He finally looked up at me, his eyes red and tired. She's not doing well, man. Maria, she's in the hospital because of me. For a second, I almost felt sorry for him. Almost. But then I remembered all the crap he'd put me through, and any sympathy I had disappeared. That's on you, I said, my voice cold. You made this mess. You deal with it. 
he didn't argue. He just nodded again, mumbled another apology, and walked away, leaving me standing there, feeling like I'd won some kind of twisted victory. But there was no satisfaction in it, just emptiness. After Josh showed up at my door looking like a broken man, I thought that would be the end of it. I mean, what else was there left to say? Maria was in a mental hospital, Lily wasn't talking to me, and now Josh, the guy who wrecked my marriage, had shown up like some kind of sorry puppy looking for forgiveness. But here's the thing, I didn't feel better. I thought maybe confronting him would give me some closure, but all it did was leave me more confused and angry. I spent the next few weeks in a fog just going through the motions, work, home, repeat. Every now and then, I'd get texts from Maria's family, but I ignored them. I wasn't ready to deal with their guilt trips. I mean, they acted like I was supposed to swoop in and save the day after everything that happened, like I hadn't been the one betrayed. Then one day, I got a call from my lawyer, Greg. He told me that Maria was getting released from the mental health facility soon and that she'd probably try to reach out. I wasn't sure how I felt about that. On one hand, I didn't want to talk to her. On the other, part of me felt like I should, at least to make sure she was okay. It's weird, right? Like, after everything, I still cared about her well-being. I guess that's what a decade of marriage does to you. Sure enough, two days after that call, I got a message from Maria. It was long and all over the place, like she didn't know how to say what she wanted to say. She apologized, again, and said she knew she'd ruined everything, that she didn't expect me to forgive her but wanted to explain. She also mentioned Lily, saying how she was having a hard time dealing with everything and was scared to reach out to me. I stared at that message for what felt like hours, just reading and rereading it. Part of me was tempted to just delete it, to pretend like it never showed up. But then I thought about Lily, my daughter. Yeah, she'd been a part of this whole mess, but she was still my kid. I couldn't just write her off completely, even if what she did hurt like hell. So, I replied. I told Maria we could meet, but I made it clear I wasn't interested in rehashing the past. I just wanted to talk about Lily and figure out how we could co-parent, or whatever the hell you call it when your kid hates you and your ex-wife cheated on you. We met up at some coffee shop downtown, and I could tell right away that Maria wasn't the same person. She looked worn down, like life had just beaten the hell out of her. It was strange seeing her like that. I didn't feel angry anymore, just, sad. She sat across from me, fiddling with her coffee cup. And for a while, neither of us said anything. Finally, she spoke. I'm sorry, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. I know I've said it a hundred times, but I don't know what else to say. I messed up. I messed up so bad. I didn't really know how to respond to that. What was I supposed to say? Yeah, you did? I just nodded and waited for her to keep talking. She started going on about how she'd been lost, how she'd felt alone, and how things with Josh had spiraled out of control. She said it wasn't an excuse, but she needed me to understand that it wasn't about me not being enough. It was about her feeling empty inside. I didn't say anything. I wasn't there to dig into her feelings. I just wanted to get through the conversation. Then she brought up Lily. She misses you, Maria said, looking up at me with these tired eyes. She won't admit it, but she does. She's just scared. Scared of what, I asked, genuinely confused. I never did anything to her. Maria sighed and rubbed her temples. She's scared because she knows she messed up too. She feels like she betrayed you and she doesn't know how to fix it. I didn't know what to say. It hurt to hear that, but at the same time, it made sense. Lily was a kid caught up in something way bigger than she should have been, and I hadn't exactly made it easy for her to come back from that. I don't hate her, you know, I finally said, my voice low. I just, I don't know how to talk to her anymore. Maria nodded like she understood. Maybe just start with that. Tell her you don't hate her. After the conversation with Maria, I decided to reach out to Lily. I wasn't expecting anything. I figured she might not even respond, but I couldn't just keep pretending she didn't exist. So I sent her a text. It was simple, just me telling her that I didn't hate her, that I still loved her, and that I wanted to talk when she was ready. A few hours later, my phone buzzed. It was Lily. She replied saying she was sorry for everything and that she missed me too. She said she was scared that I wouldn't want her in my life anymore. That hit me hard. No matter how angry I was, I never wanted her to think I didn't love her. We agreed to meet up for lunch a few days later. When I saw her walking toward me, my heart felt like it was in my throat. She looked nervous, and I could tell she'd been crying before, but when she saw me, she smiled. This small, hesitant smile that reminded me of when she was little. We sat down and talked for hours. Not just about what happened, but about everything. Her school, her friends, how she'd been dealing with Maria's breakdown. I realized then that I'd missed out on so much while I was stuck in my own anger. I hadn't been there for her when she needed me, and that was on me. By the end of the lunch, we weren't magically fixed or anything. There was still a lot to work through, but it felt like we were finally on the right path. Like maybe, just maybe, we could figure things out. As for Maria, she's still struggling. She's trying to rebuild her life, and I hope she finds some peace. I'm not angry at her anymore. I think I've finally let that part go. I'm not saying we'll ever be friends, but I don't wish her any harm. In the end, I guess life doesn't always turn out the way you expect. But you deal with it, pick up the pieces, and try to make something out of what's left. That's all any of us can do, really.